そして大学最後の夏全米カレッジチームの選手として日本で行われる試合のため帰国した夏子と出会ったのはその時だった<笑>おめえアメフトの茨城圭介だなおいおい夏子おめえにあやすけよってのかいなおいスーパースターだがなんだか知らねえけどさお姉に粉かけてタダで済むと思ってんのかいえバッキョカツネガッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッ So you guys are probably thinking, hey, Tikyo Sam, I deserve to live and work in Japan. But how do I get a job if I don't have a visa sponsorship? Well, see, that's a, that's a little tricky because there is a very infamous type of visa here called a self-sponsor visa. Or technically, even if you don't have a full-time job, you can basically sponsor yourself. Today, let's get into it. But it's a little loud here. Just a little loud here. So let's, let's go into my office. Bum, 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 boot, doot. Hey everybody out there on the YouTube source, my name is Tikyo Sam and today we're going to talk about how to self-sponsor your visa in Japan. So anyway, first off, my name is Sam. I am living here in Tokyo, Japan. I've been living here for about nine years and I've actually done the thing that I'm going to be talking about here in the title up top and I'm going to be discussing with you guys how I did it and how you can do it too. But first let's talk about how you can do it. To work in any country, you gotta have a visa, okay? I mean, no matter what country you go to, you'll either get a tourist visa to visit or you'll get a work visa where you can legally work and pay taxes in that country. That's the first thing that you have to get when it comes to being able to self-sponsor. Well, first off, let me just tell you more about this, okay? <laughs> Again, I'm not really good at reading these scripted out notes, but I think it will be helpful for all of you guys, so. Most of the people, especially Westerners that come to Japan, they're gonna fall into two categories. And I'm saying like a majority of people that come here that are from Western origin are usually more towards the educational industry versus all the others that are like IT or whatever, in my opinion, which is, of course, the best. Most of the people that come here and they do teaching, they're either gonna be working at Eikaiwa, which is a private set up English school, or they're going to be working working as an ALT, which is a public school teacher set up in the Japanese public schools as an English teacher that goes and teaches the kids at normal high schools, normal colleges, whatever. Mostly just junior high schools and elementary schools though. If you're going to be getting a job through an Eikaiwa, usually you're going to be getting a humanities visa. Now this visa is great because it's called Kokusai Gyomu, which is basically, it lets you do any job that is in the international sphere. So you're doing international marketing for, marketing for a company, humanities visa. You're doing translating for a company, humanities visa. You're working for a tourist uh, agency or whatever, humanities visa. Humanities visa is like probably one of the best visas to have because it's very broad, very great. The next visa that you're gonna get is an instructor visa. And this instructor visa, you are a bad, bad instructor visa, this guy. Because instructor visas only allow you to work in the public sector. So like, you're only allowed to work as a teacher in public schools or university, which extremely limits you if you wanna find a job in a totally different industry, you have to change your visa. And usually if you change your visa in between your first couple of visas here, they're gonna give you a one year limit usually, which sucks because then you're back to square one. So what is a self-sponsor visa and how can you get one yourself? Well, technically the self-sponsor visa does not exist. It's not like you have instructor visa, humanities visa, entertainer visa, and then self-sponsor visa. It doesn't technically exist. And the reason why is because most self-sponsor visas you get from basically accumulation of jobs. What does that that mean? Well, usually, at least in my case, it was I had a full-time job for about three years and then eventually I just got sick and tired of doing that full-time job and I wasn't ready to jump into a different industry, but I had enough part-time jobs that I was making over two grand a month so I could sustain my living. I accumulated all those jobs together 
and then I submitted that paperwork to immigration to say, hey, look, I got all these awesome people that like me, that pay me money, that I'm on a scheduled fucking yearly contract. Yeah, I'm gonna keep working there and I'm making enough money to live. In that case, if you submit that and they accept it, then you get another visa of what you currently had. So you're probably not going to be able to get that with uh, educator's visa unless you find a bunch of different part-time ALT contracts, which is possible, but it's not the norm. If you're in a countryside area and you already have a really good network, you can do that. But that's not something you do originally like under five years of experience teaching here. Again, the self-sponsored visa it technically doesn't exist. It's the same stamp or same visa status as the job that you had previously. The only difference is instead of relying on one sponsor for your visa, one workplace for your visa, you are relying on multiple different places with smaller contracts. So how exactly should you go about getting a self-sponsored visa? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think that if you get a self-sponsored visa, you're going to have to put in a lot of legwork. It's going to be a lot more work than if you find a normal visa or a normal visa sponsor. But anyway, let's get into how you're going to actually be able to start the ball, get the ball rolling, so to speak, on getting a self-sponsored visa. First off, you need to find a full-time job that will sponsor a regular visa. Self-sponsored visas aren't usually open or allowed or you know, they don't really give those out to people that just arrived here. It's usually people that have been here for at least one or two years or three years and then after that they've paid taxes, they've been normal good people here, so you can basically you can self-sponsor yourself then but not straight off the bat. How did I do it? Well, it's simple. Basically, I was working as an ALT for the company Interact, which is, uh, and my contract was about to end, and I wasn't really on good terms with my boss. Uh, my schools really liked me, but my boss was kind of a prick, and uh, I, was I, I was okay and willing to quit anyway. So when the time came to renew my contract, I didn't get a contract renewal. Due to kind of seeing, like foreseeing this happening in the future, I made sure I basically, on Friday, Wednesday, Friday morning, and Saturday, I had all these different part-time jobs that already accumulated to an extra $1,300 a, uh, a month. The reason why I had these jobs originally was because when you're an English teacher, it's not like working at a construction site or working at McDonald's. It's not very physically intensive. If you want to do extra jobs, it's great. You get extra money, you get to meet new people, and you have excuses to go all around the city on a weekly basis. It's pretty fun in my book. As when that time came around for me to finish my contract at Interac, I was okay with it and I was like, no, nope, that's fine, no big deal. And so I had about three different part-time jobs or three different companies that were sending me to different places that was accumulating me about $1,300 a month. Was it 13? Might've been 15. Anyway, point is after that, I didn't want to work full-time again for a while. So what I simply did was I found another part-time job. In fact, I found two other part-time jobs that were near my house. They were both private English schools. They, were, they offered me about 10 to 15 more hours a week of classes. So I was still working only about 35 hours a week, but I was making, I don't remember, but I remember I was making somewhere between 27 and like $3,300 a month from my original 13 or 1500, just because of all the hours I had picked up before or after the whole process happened, which was really good so I was making over three grand a month on a, mostly a monthly basis but I was not getting uh, I did not have a main employer I had multiple employers in fact I think I had five at that time okay so I had found enough part-time jobs to basically sponsor myself and I had enough money I was making per month because one of the prerequisites for having a self-sponsored visa is that you need to be making at least this is speculation. I haven't actually confirmed this anywhere. There's lots of different websites that are going to be down in the links that you guys can go check out yourself that are all kind of hearsay. Well, not hearsay, but it's all case by case, it seems. I had a friend in Yamanashi, which is the prefecture right next to Tokyo. He only was making 120,000 yen a month, which is about a hundred... $1,200 a month, but he was able to self-sponsor. But also in Yamanashi, there's not a lot of foreigners. And that might have been one of the reasons why as well. For just as a good rule of thumb, you should be making at least $2,300 a month from all your multiple jobs before you even try to think about self-sponsoring your visa, at least in a big city like Tokyo or anywhere. <laughs> anywhere that's a big city, Hiroshima, Osaka, Sapporo, whatever. Uh, that's a good rule of thumb to have. You're going to have to collect paperwork. Now this is going to be paperwork mostly from either your employers uh, your current employers or it's going to be also from your city hall your city hall is going to you're going to have to prove that you've been a good boy or good girl for these last couple of years that means that you're going to have to provide your, your tax statements for the last times that you've been here and if you owe any back taxes you're going to have to pay those before you can submit your 
for your visa. This is just to confirm usually that you're not a sketchy person. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of people come over here that are not of Western persuasion for the most part, I think, and they do, uh, they get visas to either work or train or whatever, and then they usually stop doing what they originally intended to do and come here and then basically overstay their visa or just work under the table for a lot of things. It happens everywhere. If, as long as you weren't doing sketchy shit, you should be fine just to go down to the city hall and get those documents. If you want to know what those documents are, I'm going to put them right here. Check it out. You got five seconds. Oh yeah. If that wasn't enough and you'd like to see more results, check down the links below at the end of the video. That will tell you exactly what you need to get from City Hall. We've got money. We've got a set salary of at least $2,000 a month. I would say $2,300 just to be safe. The rule of thumb is more the better for money. Second rule of thumb is that you need to have paid your taxes, okay? You gotta have paid all your taxes and been a good boy or girl, for the most part. Third is you're going to need not only your proof of work, basically your Zai Shoku Shomei Sho, which basically proves that you're working at that company, but also you're going to need contracts. Now this is the thing that's really careful, so listen up guys. <laughs> uh, the contract needs to be for at least a year. Immigration doesn't want you to have shitty, like, you know, totally short three month contracts, which is usually the case for translators out there. They want you to have at least multiple one year contracts with these companies. And not only that, but they probably want recommendation letters from these people as well. Even when I was applying for my permanent residency, which is in this video, boom, Go check that out later at the end of the video. It's pretty informative. When I was going through that process, I still needed proof that I was working as a goody two-shoes and I needed somebody to basically say that I'm an awesome worker and that they want me to keep working there and that uh, I'm very reliable, blah, blah, blah. I don't kill people, etc. Make sure that you get that recommendation letter from your boss too. If they don't understand what it is, write it down in English first and just give them an example showing that you're punctual, whatever. Have them write it in Japanese. Don't have them write it in English because the immigration officials are Japanese and prefer Japanese. So do that. So that's three things we got there so far. Third, if you can help it, I always recommend this to anybody who's coming to Japan, but especially if you're going to be applying for specialty visas like this, having savings is a really important deal. I think when I applied for the self-sponsored visa, I showed them, even though that's not necessary, I made a copy of my bank book, which is basically your mobile statement here in Japan that you can just plug into ATMs and they'll put out, you know, they'll write down how much money you have. And um, I made sure whenever I was making that much money a month that I was at least putting $500 to $700 or so away into savings each month. So when I applied for this, it had only been maybe 10 months or so, but I had about $7,000 in savings that I could be like, look, I can, even if I get fired, I can still support myself for at least a couple months with this money. It's obviously very helpful, but also it's going to show them that you're not just a a goody old go-getter who pays his taxes very well, but you're also a person who's responsible and knows that the only safety net they have in life is money, for the most part. So now we've talked about how to get the self-sponsor visa. I hope that was very helpful for you guys. The thing is, before I let this video go, I should tell you guys that if you're going to do a self-sponsor visa, uh, it's just like any other visa. You just gotta gather the right amount of paperwork and submit it on it before your visa. And I'm talking about don't do it one month or even a couple weeks before your visa expires. Do it like you have between three months be before your visa expires where you can submit that paperwork. I suggest do that at right at the 90 day before mark because if there's for whatever reason that they do not accept that, you'll have a lot of leniency in between to go back and get whatever paperwork is necessary that they'll need in the meantime. Just as a rule in general, you're gonna be working a lot of part-time jobs. Juggling that stuff can sometimes be a lot more stressful than working a full-time job. Me personally, I don't, I, I'm ADHD, I love variety. I can't really just go with just having like one job and meeting the same people every friggin' day. I need variety, right now I currently have seven different jobs and I love it. It's great. At Freedom, I have to go all around Tokyo and I work less and I get more money and uh, sure, I might not get uh, a company paying for half of my pension or half of my health insurance, but that's a trade I'm willing to compromise for the amount of time and freedom I have at the moment. So that's one thing to consider, guys. If you're not good at balancing a schedule or you're a person that stresses out because I have to commute to all these different places, you might want to rethink the whole self-sponsor visa thing at the moment, even though it is quite awesome. Also, I'd like to recommend that, uh, or I'd like, at least like to point out that I did this at least like four years ago, so stuff might have changed since then, so don't take my word 100% on this. As far as I have been aware of that in Japan, if you do not submit 
that you've not uh, that you've quit your job or that you finished your job to immigration within two weeks you could get in trouble and you only have a certain amount of months to find a job before you get kicked out to be honest I think they had the same rule when that happened to me but as long as you show that you've been looking for work, AKA you just apply for jobs that you don't care about and go to those interviews just so immigration can go back and check and make sure that you did go to those and that you just simply didn't pass it or, you know, instead of turning it down, you they obviously, the, you know, instead of you turning it down, they obviously turned you down. If you can do that multiple times, you're going to be able to, you're going to at least have an excuse that you were looking for more jobs. Anyway, thank you for watching this today. If you have any other questions or feel like I didn't, uh, if I missed something, please feel free to write down in the comments below. If you thought this was informative, please like and share the video. And uh, yeah, you guys have a good day. Go check out the other videos. Right here, right here. Stay black. Thanks for watching, guys. Tikyo Sam out.